Hello there, Atheist Jr. here, your friend and humble narrator. And today I'm making a quick video where I'm posing a question to young Earth creationists. Are these animals designed? Were they designed? So the first animal on my list is the kiwi. So kiwi are in the ratite family, closely related to ostriches, emus, cassowaries, and the rhea. They are about 18 inches tall and about seven pounds. Kiwi eggs can weigh up to one quarter the weight of the female. The kiwi lays one of the largest eggs in proportion to its size of any bird in the world. So even though the kiwi is about the size of a domestic chicken, it is able to lay eggs that are about six times the size of a chicken egg. So usually only one egg is laid per season. And this egg is so big it can actually rearrange the organs of the kiwi. Now next up is the three-toed sloth. And since they eat nothing but leaves, they move incredibly slowly to conserve energy. They move so slowly that if a sloth baby falls from a tree, the mother will, will rarely try to save it. One thing they do leave the tree for is to defecate. For some reason, they don't do it while they're in the tree. And they move so slowly that moss actually grows on them. And as you can see here, one is being helped across the street because otherwise it would definitely be roadkill if it tried to cross the street uh, at three-toed sloth speed. Um, next up, we have the female hyena, and the female hyena has evolved a pseudo penis that they actually have to give birth through, and they have the largest cub of any carnivore. Many first-time hyena mothers don't survive childbirth, and roughly 60% of hyena cubs suffocate on the way out. The pseudo penis is ruptured during childbirth, and if this was designed, I have so many questions. I I mean, that is just messed up, honestly. Like, if you could explain one animal uh, in this video, creationist, I want it to be this one. Because if this was designed, then I don't know. Now, next up is the peacock. Now, if the peacock was designed, like, wow, great job. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful bird. It uses its colorful feathers to get the attention of its mate, the peahen. The only problem is they share an environment with tigers. And this can also draw attention from tigers. And the peacock's feathers are so heavy that it makes it difficult for it to take off with much speed. So peacocks can actually fly, but it doesn't have a very quick takeoff speed because it's so heavy. Now here we have the luna moth, and the luna moth has no mouth. So it lives for about one week, and it just uses whatever energy it had stored up from when it was a caterpillar, from the food it ate when it did have a mouth, and it just uses that energy and then it basically starves to death. So if that was designed, then I don't know, that's pretty messed up as well. <laughs> Feel sorry for the Luna Moth. So n next up we have the Babarusa, and the Babarusa is a wild pig from the Indonesian islands. It has tusks that penetrate through its snout, and if it doesn't break them off during combat, they can actually turn around and penetrate its skull and brain, killing it. Um, the females find the bigger tusks attractive, so this can create a vicious cycle for the babarusa where, you know, it, it has bigger tusks and those are selected for, so it's going to keep having these teeth that actually hurt it, kind of like our own wisdom teeth, but, you know, much worse. And the final animal on my list is the koala, probably the dumbest animal in the animal kingdom. And it eats eucalyptus leaves, which are not only toxic, they are extremely low in nutrition, like the vegetation that the three-toed sloth eats. And this animal, like the sloth, has to sleep most of the day since it gets such a small amount of nutrition from its uh, diet. And it needs special gut bacteria to digest these leaves. So that's my list of animals. Were these animals designed... That's my question to creationists. So just a quick video for you guys. Now, real quickly, I'm going to give a shout out to all my, my patrons on Patreon. Thank you to David, Paul, Danny, Regios, Dave Dalafior, Pterodactyl Hunter, Jack, Stacy C, IS4321IS, JC Magruder, Irisark, Scientia Perceptum, Pumpkin J, Joshua, Alicia L, Constance, Dave Wilkinson, Jason Metcalf, Brian, Christopher Johnson, Peter, Ian Chen, Professor Flynn, Denny5252, CL, Robert, Noah's Hangover, Harold, Cy, 
Thomas, Tapioca Weasel, Patrick, Gio, Cheryl, Luke, and Lisa. Thank you all so much for supporting me on Patreon. And thank you guys for watching my video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.